Hello, everyone. Happy to see all of you. My name is Debbie Kelly. I am a field specialist in horticulture with University of Missouri Extension. I'm located just south of St. Louis. Today, what we're going to talk about is tax credits. And I don't know about you all, but I can get confused about those. And so today I have two wonderful people with me, Jacob Stair and Marla Young. They are both with an organization that's called MASBIDA. And so what I'd like to do to get us started is to talk about, if you can answer for us, what does MASBIDA really stand for and what does it do? Hi, Debbie. Thanks for having us. MASBIDA stands for Missouri Agricultural and Small Business Development Authority. We are a commission housed within the Missouri Department of Agriculture in Jefferson City. Jacob and I are both loan officers with MASBIDA. We like to refer to ourselves as the lending arm, the financial arm of the Missouri Department of Agriculture. There are some other financial programs in the department that we don't handle, but we try to keep track of everything that the department offers. And if if we can't help you with one of our programs, perhaps try to direct you to someone else in the department who can. Great. That's that's fabulous. So can you talk to us? I've seen some information come out in some press releases, a lot of stuff coming across my computer about tax credits through MASBIDA. And so can you talk about what tax credits are and what are those tax credits that are available through MASBIDA? So MASBIDA, we administer a variety of programs for the state of Missouri. We administer tax credit programs, uh, loan guarantee programs, loans, loan guarantees, and, and some grant programs. Today, we're going to focus on three new programs, two that have recently been introduced, one that's in the works, and one is a tax deduction program, and two are tax credit programs. So I'm glad you asked the question. So we've got a slide up with some very generic examples. The dollar amounts have absolutely nothing to do with the programs we're going to talk about today. So it's just Marla Math. So I'm going to cover a tax deduction program that we're working on right now. And a tax deduction is a subtraction from your adjusted gross income, resulting in a reduction of taxable income. Now, this Our programs today only refer to Missouri state income taxes, nothing to do with federal, nothing to do with the IRS. So an example of a tax deduction, if my adjusted gross income is $50,000, but if I qualify for a tax deduction of $10,000, then my taxable income is going to be $40,000. So then kind of using the same example, a tax credit is a reduction in my tax liability, what I have to write a check for to the state of Missouri on April the 15th. So based on the example above, if I have a state of Missouri tax liability of $500, I owe the state of Missouri $500 when I file my state tax return. But if I use one of these programs, perhaps, and I qualify for a tax credit of $100, then that reduces my payment to the state of Missouri on April the 15th to $400. That's a $100 tax credit. So we're going to focus on really quickly on three new programs that we have. And we really want to throw these out for for questions and thoughts. Our contact information will be at the end. So, you know, please jot that down. We're very easy to get a hold of. So the first program I'm going to talk about is something that we're going to roll out in the middle of next year because we're going through the administrative rule process, the beginning farmer tax deduction program. So under current law, when a, when a farmer sells their farm, the increase in the value of the farm from the day they bought it to the day they sell it is considered something called capital gains. Capital gains are generally taxable under Missouri law. So this new program, which was created by state legislation, 
will allow a farm owner to receive a subtraction or a deduction of a set percentage of their total capital gains received from the sale or rental, which I'll get to, of their farmland as long as they sell it to someone who qualifies as a beginning farmer. And I'll I'll get to that here in just a minute too. So in addition to the sale, a deduction on capital ga- gains if they sell their land If they rent to a beginning farmer and and get an annual lease payment or a crop share payment in cash, um, the farm owner can also qualify for a tax deduction on that annual rental payment up to $25,000 a year. uh, they, They can deduct that from their Missouri gross income. Um, thus lowering their tax liability. So this program, we won't be able to to roll out an application form until the middle of 24. However, I want people to be aware of transactions, sales of farmland, leases, crop share arrangements that have taken place, that's uh, start, started taking place on or after August the 28th, this past August the 28th, are eligible. So for people who who are considering selling their farm or know of someone who have sold their farm to perhaps a beginning farmer since August 28th will be eligible to apply in the middle of 24, probably July when we go through the administrative rule process. I'll cover the qualifications. So Everything is laid out in state statute, so a farm owner is an individual who owns farmland, who either sells or leases it. A beginning farmer can qualify one of four ways. They've filed at least one, but not more than 10 Schedule Fs, or is approved for a beginning farmer loan through the USDA Farm Service Agency, FSA, Beginning Farmer Direct or Guaranteed Loan Program, or has a farming operation that is determined by the Department of Agriculture to be new production agriculture. And that will will probably document that with a letter from a lender or a former landlord that, yes, this person is buying or leasing this new piece of property and they will be farming it or has been determined by the department to be a qualified family member. And this definition of qualified family member related within the fourth degree. And I think that's a pretty common definition as far as nepotism laws, conflict of interest laws. Uh, The Missouri Ethics Commission has a really nice chart that makes it very easy to understand. So I have an asterisk by individual uh, under the farm owner. The way the legislation is currently written, uh, the farm owner has to be an individual. um, And that's probably not as an expansive a definition as uh, probably the sponsors would have liked. So right now, uh, we have to deal with an individual. You know, it can't be a a trust, a partnership, an LLC, um, an estate. Um, But I think there's going to be correcting legislation filed. And once that goes into effect, the program will be expanded and people can still apply. They just might have to file uh, an amended tax return to utilize that tax deduction. Um, So I think that's all I've got on uh, the new beginning farmer tax deduction program. And we understand we're throwing a lot at folks this morning, but We've got our contact information and we want phone calls and we want emails. Um, So shifting gears. So a tax credit. Remember, a tax credit is a certificate that I might qualify for that reduces my tax liability on on, uh, April the 15th to the state of Missouri. So a brand new program that is active right now is our specialty agricultural crops tax credit program. And this isn't a tax. This isn't a tax credit that's issued to the producer themselves, but it still saves a producer money. So a family farmer who is defined for this particular program, a Missouri resident who has less than 100000 in ag sales per year, so pretty expansive. So a family farmer who goes to their local bank uh, to get a loan Uh, for an agricultural crop, we can cover the first year's interest payment on that loan by issuing a tax credit to the bank. 
Um, after that, it's a it's a normal it's a normal farm loan. Uh, but by utilizing this program, that producer can save that first year's interest payment. Specialty crops, that's the USDA definition. Uh, we, we have a, a link to the USDA list on our website, masbita.com. And so basically fruits and vegetables, tree nuts, fruits, um, horticulture and nursery crops, also including floriculture. Um, maximum loan of thirty-five thousand, um, and it's a it's a one-time use program. So you might you might be getting into the greenhouse business, you might be getting into the produce business, you might be also wanting to make an investment. Maybe you're getting ready to retire, or you're planning a you pick operation, and you need to go to the bank to. Um, to get some money for, you know, you're planting blueberry bushes, you're planting chestnut trees, you're planting raspberry bushes, uh, pecan trees, walnut trees, you know, it doesn't just have to be annual crops. And it can also be tools, it can be equipment, it can be mulch, compost. So, um, so kind of think, uh, think outside the box. Um, So that's, that's our second new program. And I think Jacob is going to take over for our third new program. We have a lot of things. We have a lot of things in the works here at Masvida. We certainly do. Thank you, Marla. Um, So the third program we're going to briefly highlight today um, is another tax credit, unlike the previous one where it's a tax credit to a lender. Uh, This can be a tax credit that does go directly to a producer. Uh, So it's our urban, urban farm investment tax credit. So through this program, an urban farm may apply for a tax credit based on investment that is made to establish or improve an existing farm. Uh, The tax credit amount is 50% of eligible expenses that they have up to a $5,000 tax credit. And as far as what sort of things qualify, um, it's everything from seeds, seedlings, or or trees. If somebody's, you know, establishing an orchard, uh, could be upgrades to utilities, uh, the cost to to, uh, bring water to your farm. It could be soil amendments, general farm improvements, farm equipment, and then season extension equipment. So, you know, high tunnels, row covers, and then post harvest storage or processing to include cold storage. <clears throat> and then one other uh, thing to note about this tax credit. So an urban farm can apply for this credit based on investment that they make into, you know, they're improving their operation. But monetary donations made to an urban farm, maybe it's a nonprofit entity, um, those donations and those donors may qualify for the tax credits if that urban farm uses them for eligible expenses. And this uh, begins with uh, investment made in 2023. So this program is active now. So if folks... um, who have a, an urban farm have made investment in their in their operation they can go ahead and apply uh, for that right now uh, here's the contact information that uh, marla had mentioned earlier uh, we didn't have a ton of time today uh, so we went through things pretty quick i would certainly encourage folks to call any one of us um, we are happy to answer any questions and walk people through um, you know the nuts and bolts of the programs how to apply um, <clears throat> so again uh, email or phone is a good way to get a hold of us. And then um, you can find our webpage at, at just masbita.com. And uh, that can get you information on all of our programs. Uh, just one last thing. So if folks go to agriculture.mo.gov, that is just the general Missouri Department of Ag website. And in the top right hand corner, uh, there's a button that says get updates. That's a way to sign up for email updates from the department. So anytime, um, you know, we come out with a new program, you know, when that beginning farmer uh, tax deduction program goes live uh, later in 2024, we'll be putting out a press release. And that's a good way for folks to uh, stay up to date with what we're doing here. This is great information. Can you go back a screen with your contact information? And then I have a couple of questions for you. I'm going to, I appreciate you leaving this up so that folks that are listening and watching this can jot down your information as well. But um, I work a lot with urban agriculture. So in your definition, according to, to everybody has a little bit different definition of what a urban agriculture is. So according to Masbita, what does, what is the definition of urban? 
Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So we work off of the uh, definition that the Census Bureau has. Um, so I believe it is um, an, an area with at least 2,000 housing units or a population of at least 5,000. So right now on our website, we have a list of um, towns that qualify, but then we also have a tool we'll be putting up on the website soon. Um, but if we don't have it up uh, when folks are on our website, they can call and we can actually check and see if an individual farm address um, um, falls in an urban area. Okay, and so that urban area really means living within the city limits of that particular location, correct? Generally speaking, yes. Okay. This is great. Great information. A lot of information presented really quickly. So those of you who are really interested in this, don't hesitate to contact Jacob or Marla. They are fabulous to work with and really take their time in making sure that you understand exactly what you need. And so I appreciate this. Thank you both to both of you for being here. And I'm sure you'll get lots of phone calls. That's what we want. We appreciate what you do. And anybody who has not used extension in their area, they are missing out. Extension all over the state is a fantastic resource. Thank you, Marla.